Detective Riley, when you were when you arrived at the Families in Transition shelter, were you accompanied by anyone that day? Many people, yes. And you mentioned uh, remembering going there. The image that I've just depicted behind you, uh, identified as, as States Exhibit 30. Uh, do you recognize that that location? That's the front of FIT. Yes. And the individuals that accompanied you that day, do you remember their names? Some of them. Okay. Um, Detectives Stewart, Coswick, um, Ray Hill, uh, Deputy Duffs, uh, William Duffs is his name. Uh, Tufts, I'm sorry, Tufts. Uh, Detective Dunleavy. There was a couple supervisors there, I think. So Captain the individuals that you just mentioned, the majority of them work for the Manchester Police Department? All, yes, all but one, yes. Are you aware of where Deputy Tufts that you mentioned? U.S. Marshals. Mr. Riley, what did you do when you arrived at the Families in Trans Transition Shelter, FIT Shelter? You mentioned that you, you did some cutting as you were reviewing those images. Can you tell the jurors what you actually did? So. You want me to start from my first observation when I walked in the room or just the actual cutting? Let's talk about walking into the room first. If you'll look at the image that's um, on the screen behind you, States Exhibit 31, what are we looking at there? Unit 1 and 2, the so doors. Unit 1. I don't know that that's much better, but... This is 01. Can you... So Unit 1 is on the left, and where's Unit 2? Right here, on the right. So there are adjoining rooms. Yes. They're polar opposites from each other. They're, I'm pretty sure they're exactly opposite, like this. The walls are pretty different. I'm sorry, you're on. Oh, yeah. Um, sir, you just need to speak into the microphone when you're speaking yep, so sorry. that everyone can hear you. I know it's hard, but. Yep. <laughs> and did you make any impressions when you, uh, well, did you enter the room when you we, arrived? I did. And the image that's behind you, you said you recognized. That's unit one. And was that the layout that day? It was. Are you aware of whether or not they're allowed to move furniture at, at the families in transition? I have no idea. Tenants? I'm not aware. But that's what you saw when you arrived? Yes. And again, can you remind us why you were going there that day? There was information developed um, <coughs> in the investigation that there's a potential that the missing child was placed above the ceiling in this unit. And was there an access point to that ceiling? There was. And do you see it in the image there? I do. It's the vent at the top. That vent? That's correct. And there's a number next to that vent. Can you read that to the jurors? Number one. When you arrived in that room, when you actually walked in, did you make any impression? Did you have any impressions? I did. Can you tell the jurors what those impressions were? There, there was an odor. I couldn't, I, I could smell something. I didn't know what it was when I first entered the room, but I could tell there was an odor in the room. Okay. Any other impressions, Detective? I mean, it looked lived in. I kind of a normal, kind of a normal residence, I guess. Did you do anything with that vent while you were there? I did. What did you do with it? I removed the vent. <clears throat> I pushed it up into the ceiling and moved it to the side. How did, well, was there anything uh, securing that vent when you moved it? I don't believe there's anything securing the vent to the like the outside frame, the, the vent kind of just sits into the outside frame. But the <coughs> vent was connected to some tubing up top by a zip tie. Did you remove that zip tie at some point? Af yes, I did, after. What did you observe when you, did you look into the, the opening that I you did. created? I did. What did you observe when you? As soon as I removed the cover, I knew I could smell what I, I know is, is decomposition. I knew I could smell a dead body what I believe to be a dead body at the time, or it smelled like decomposition is the best way to describe it. What is decomposi decomposition? When a person dies, they, their body starts to, starts to degrade, I guess is the best word. It's, it's, it's a smell that you just won't forget. And can you just tell the jurors what your experience is with that smell? I mean, I've been to many, <clears throat> many death scenes, many um, autopsies. I've, I've smelt it many times. Did you make any other observations when you looked into that vent? 
I did. And what were those? I could see at first that there was, <clears throat> it looked like a stain right close to the edge of the vent. <clears throat> that correct? And I also noted that you can see the sheetrock dust. And I'm sorry if you can't hear me. This is hard to crank my neck around to see this. Um, <coughs> the sheetrock dust you could tell had been altered. Like you could see in the back, all it's all fresh sheetrock dust, probably from when the place was constructed. And, and this over here appeared to have been something had been in that area. Mr. Riley, if you don't mind just standing up and actually pointing to that area of dusting that you're discussing. Right here. You can see here, this is been, this is different. It's, the, the composition is very different between the two. It was clear that something was here and not placed over in this area. And the staining that you mentioned, where is that, if you could point it out on the screen? I'm sorry, say that again? You mentioned seeing staining. Yes. Where, where is that on the area? At some point, did you attempt to measure what you were observing in that picture? To the best, yes, I did. And is that it? It is. About 16 inches across? Approximately. It varied in, different, in size. Let's talk about what you did next after you observed this area of interest. What did you do? We, As a team, we obviously decided that we needed to take take this, so we we cut it. We, we used a, just an old school sheetrock serrated knife and I cut the sheetrock until I got to the to the metal uh, studs and then we had to use a reciprocating saw to, to cut the metal, the metal studs you can see in the picture. <clears throat> Did you take any precautions while you were working on the ceiling? I, when I was up in there I, I had gloves on but I didn't go up into the ceiling, you couldn't because it would collapse so I, I kind of, I didn't really have other than putting the measuring there, I didn't really have any direct involvement with like the stain. When I started cutting, we we changed gloves every time we changed. You know, um, like when we took the vent down, we changed gloves. When we started cutting, I changed gloves. But I was I was below the ceiling at this point. I was cutting from below. I wasn't up in up in the ceiling with the. Were you wearing a hazmat suit that day, or I was mask? not. How about a mask? I was not. What were your working conditions like while you were while you were doing this? It was hot. It was hot. It was hot. Yeah, it was very hot. Sweating? I was. How long did it take? You said you removed a portion of the ceiling. How long did that take? Uh, I would say the actual cutting was probably maybe an hour. I, the whole time we were up there was maybe, or dealing with that, maybe three hours. I, I don't recall the exact times, but it was, a, it, was a, it was within a couple hours, I think, probably, from the time we removed the vent till the time we, we actually took the ceiling down. And so you mentioned actually taking the ceiling down. Is that what it looked like? It is. And again, that staining, did it become more apparent once you removed it from the, the dark area? It, was it did, because of the lighting. It was... Do you recall whether that item was given an evidence number? I know it was. I, it wasn't tagged by me. My primary fo primary focus was just getting it down and then it was handed off to the to the team that packaged it and tagged it and I am helping assisting packaging later but initially they put it and covered it in butcher paper do you recall having it labeled mer 3d it sounds right yes mer those are initials this jury heard do you know whose initials those are yeah detective ray hill that's max ray hill correct <clears throat> you mentioned butcher paper Yes. You see that in this image? Yes, it's, you can see it through the hole. It's sitting on top of butcher paper. At what point during your processing did you actually place that butcher paper down? I didn't place it down. The team that was there did. I, I was standing on, I had a, the ceiling, I'm not very tall, so I had to stand on a platform to get to cut. So once we got to the point that we could, I could cut the last metal, we had to have other team members hold it. And then once it was detached from the ceiling, I got out of the way and it was put down on a piece of paper. Do you know what the purpose was of putting it on paper? Preserve any evidence that's, that's on it or in it. Would that be including the items that fell during the cutting? Correct. <clears throat> Are you aware of how this portion of the ceiling was handled once it was removed, once you removed it? I know it was placed in the crime scene van and then 
believe I helped carry it up into the uh, evidence room, and then I suffered. I didn't have anything to do with it for a period of time after that. Were you aware of low points in the ceiling while you were processing it? I don't know what you, what do you mean by low points. Was it completely level, or do you know? On the outside, looking up, it was it was flat. Inside, there was, I mean, there was there was a bunch of different channels because of the metal framing. I want to talk about um, how large the ceiling was relative to, over, to the overall room size. Are you you documented it? Is that right? I did. And is that accurate uh, in comparison? It is. How did you actually get up there to to cut this out? We used that bed frame. No ladder. No. Nope. Well, we had a ladder there as well because we had to have multiple people. But I stood on that bed frame and. If I recall, I may have stepped off to the ladder. and I know there was some talk about having other people jump in because it was hot that day and it was a lot of manual cutting, but I, uh, I continued and just because I was already covered in sheetrock dust. There was no sense getting anybody else. Mr. Riley, I want to switch gears. At some point um, in your official capacity as an officer with the Manchester Police Department, did you travel to Florida? I did. Can you explain that to the jurors, why you did that? They're trying to figure out how to get this to a lab to test it for DNA or try to figure out what was on this staining. And I know that I didn't myself, but another detective had um, had done some work on this prior to me getting it. I I, I offered to drive it down to Florida because they had no it was too big; you couldn't fit it in a in a like, plane. It was just it turned into a mess. So I offered to to drive it, and they said sure. So I went and uh, <clears throat> rented a car at the airport, and I know that the size. It was. Four, I remember it being 44 inches wide, and we had to find a vehicle that it would fit in. So we rented a car, and it fit. And we drove. I drove straight to Deerfield, Deerfield Park, Florida. I think it's uh, DNA Labs is the name of the. DNA Labs yes. International. Yes, correct. And when you say we drove it, who who you, who were who if anyone were you accompanied with? Uh, Detective Bergeron Rosa. <clears throat> and so you drove it from Manchester to Florida. We did. And do you recall the date of that? I believe that was July 20th of 2022, if I recall correctly. <laughs> did you stay in Florida or did you come back to New Hampshire? We stayed overnight. <clears throat> we drove straight through. We didn't, we didn't sleep on the way down. We drove the whole way. In your career as, as an officer, have you ever done something like that, such a large, long trip? Uh, personally, yes. Many times as a police officer, no. Did you eventually come back with that item, that portion of the ceiling? We did. And um, when you say we did, was that with Adam Bergeron Rosa or was uh, that another officer? That was with uh, Detective Heil. Heil. Yes. Just the timing thing, so they assigned him to go. And how did you come back with the item? We flew down and we rented a car, or it was a Ford Expedition, if I remember correctly, and we came back with that amongst many, many other items. It wasn't just that item, but the, the vehicle was completely full. Between the time that you took possession of the, the portion of the ceiling and the time that you got to the lab in Florida, were you able to maintain um, and secure possession of that item at all times? At all times, yes. And once you obtained it back from the lab in Florida and drove it back to New Hampshire, were you able to um, contain it, to secure it at all times? We were. If I can have just a moment. I'll be able to use this now. It's just, it was just hard to turn around. And... Right. <clears throat>